Okay, so now let's talk more about the mathematics of decay. This is again very popular on the test. We were just kind of talking about decay here. We know that if you have an unstable nucleus, it only lasts for a while before it emits a particle and turns into something else, and that's radioactivity. And the more time that passes, the more of the original nucleuses have decayed into something else. Let's introduce the symbol capital N. What does capital N stand for? Well, in chemistry and physics, capital N stands for the number of particles. And here the particles are nuclei. So in this context, capital N is the number of nucleuses. Or we could think of it as the number of nucleuses, nuclei, remain. Because remember, over time, the number of nucleuses is going to fall. The graph looks like this, then. If you have an unstable radioactive nucleus, you'll start with a certain number of nuclei, and over time, you have fewer and fewer left. Over time, you have fewer and fewer left because more and more of them are decaying. And the graph asymptotically falls to zero over here, over time. A good symbol for this point would be n sub zero. That's a symbol we'll probably need in some equations. n sub zero is the original number of nucleuses that you started with. n sub zero would be the original number of nucleuses. And then n would be the actual number remaining after a certain amount of time has passed. So as usual, we'll be using lowercase t for the time, and capital N will be our number of particles here, which is the number of nucleuses. And this is what the graph looks like for decay. This is an exponential curve, by the way, an exponential decay. Another symbol is capital A for activity, or radioactivity. The SI unit for activity is the Becquerel. If I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, Becquerel was the French guy that I think he was the first person to discover radioactivity. So he got the unit for radioactivity named after himself. Uh, I think that was uh, 1896 or so. So this is activity. Now, what would that be then? A Becquerel would be decays per second. It's pretty important to memorize what activity is. It's the number of decays per second. Well, that really tells you what the activity means. It tells you how many decays are happening each second in, in a sample. For example, if you have something very radioactive, it might have millions of decays per second. On the other hand, if you have something that has very low radio radioactivity, maybe only has two or three decays per second or whatever. So this is telling us how many of the nuclei are decaying each second how many of the nuclei are decaying each second. What happens to a nucleus when it decays? Well, we already saw a bunch of possible chemical formulas for what happens when a nucleus decays. It might be a beta decay, where it emits a beta particle, or it might be an alpha decay, where it emits an alpha particle. We saw there's many different types of decay. But generally speaking, when you decay, you turn into something different, and the particle speeds off. And again, radioactivity can be dangerous because the particles carry energy, and they can mess things up that they collide with. basic mathematical formula here is that the activity is proportional to the number of nuclei left. The activity is proportional to the nuclei, and that should make sense. If you have twice as many nuclei, you'll have twice as many decays. Or if you have ten times as many nuclei, you'll have ten, many, ten times as many decays. Or putting it another way, 
if you only have half as many nuclei as you started with, you should only have half as much radioactivity as you started with. Or if you only have a third as many nuclei as you started with, you should only have a third as much radioactivity as you started with. So it should make sense that the decays per second is proportional to how many nucleuses you have left. Obviously, if there were zero nucleuses, there couldn't be any radioactivity. Now, that means that this symbol here, uh, I think they called this the decay constant, has an important meaning. basic idea you can see is that lambda tells you the percent of the sample that decays each second. You can see that just kind of by the common sense of the math here. This is telling us that 20% of the remaining nucleuses decay each second. 20% of the remaining nucleuses are decaying each second. So Lambda, it might be expressed as a decimal, but you could reinterpret that as a percent. A point two could be reinterpreted as a percent. So we can interpret lambda as the percent decays per second. Roughly speaking, it tells us the percent that's decaying per second. useful equations. What does n sub zero stand for? The original number of a nuclei. Right. And then this stands for how many there are after a certain amount of time possibly? After how much time? After T amount of time. So after t seconds, this is how many nuclei are left. And remember I said this was an exponential curve. Well, this is the equation for that exponential curve. This is the equation that actually tells you, if you look up, if you figure out how much time has passed, you can plug that into this equation and you would figure out what n would be in this equation. By the way, remember another way to write this. A negative exponent means this is really the reciprocal of e over lambda t. So as t gets bigger, what's happening to n? As t gets bigger, that means that n gets smaller. Because a bigger t gives us a bigger denominator here, and a bigger denominator means a smaller fraction. That means the right-hand side is getting smaller, so the left-hand side gets smaller. That's just our common sense. As time goes on, there's fewer and fewer nuclei remaining. As time goes on, there's fewer and fewer nuclei remaining. So even though this is usually written with a negative exponent, we should keep in mind what it really means is that we're just, it just means this. So as time goes on, the denominator gets bigger and bigger, and the number of nuclei asymptotically approaches zero. And by the same token, how about when t is zero? Well, what is e to the zeroth power? One. And then what would be the number of nuclei originally? What would happen to this equation if I plugged in a zero for t? Then it would be one, e to the one over one. And what would be left in the equation then? Just the original number of particles. Then you'd have n equals n zero. Well, that just matches our common sense as well. This is supposed to be the original number of nuclei. So the equation works. When t is 0, this term should drop out. And the number of nuclei is just n sub 0 over here. All right, this is an equation we'll definitely need on the test. Remember that the radioactivity is proportional to the number of nucleuses. Well, that means I could multiply both sides of this equation by lambda. And then we would get this equation. The equation that works for the number of nucleuses should also work for the amount of decay, because those are proportional to each other. If there's a exponential curve for the number of nucleuses remaining, there should also be an exponential curve for the amount of decay. And that tells us the same story as before. Originally, there were lots of nucleuses and a very high rate of decay. But then as time goes on, you have fewer and fewer nucleuses left, so you have fewer and fewer decays per second. And asymptotically, the number of decays goes to zero, because asymptotically, the number of nucleuses goes to zero. Uh, 
Now, these don't have to be in standard units as long as they're consistent with each other. For example, if lambda is in decays per second, then the time has to be in seconds. But if, in, but if lambda was decays, percent decays per day, then you could use time in days. Or if lambda was percent decay per year, then you could use the time in years. So you have to use consistent units, but you don't have to use SI units. That's important because oftentimes seconds are not a very useful unit for radioactivity because the time scale for radioactivity might be billions of years.